All right, so here we are doing the IP question about double pivots. Um, the question D is where it's at. So calculate the size of the upwards force from support B. Given the information we have, oh my goodness, it's like asking what kind of hat is this gymnast wearing? So this is our question. What is the force up here at support B? So we're going to have to calculate a whole heap of things. We don't know the force here from support A, but we do know the mass of the gymnast. So we do know his um, weight force. We do know the mass of the beam. So we know the force downwards of the beam. Okay. Um, but so what you have to do is um, calculate these forces here. But we're not even going to know what the support force is. So it would be easy if we knew this, this, and this, then we could calculate what that is, right? So yes, we know this force down. Yes, we know this force down. We actually don't know what that force up is, but we could figure that out. Let's, I'll show you how to go through it. And if you need to rewatch the video, then you feel free to. So I'm just gonna make some room. What have we got here? We know that the force from the gymnast um, is 42 times gravity for 11.6 newtons down. Um, add that to the force of the actual beam, which would be 25 times gravity. 245 newtons down that would equal those are all down forces that would be equal to the force of support a and the force of support b okay this is what we're trying to figure out this is what we don't currently have okay so what we do know though is If we want to know how much this is uh, pushing up, we could consider this as being a pivot and all these other things acting around this pivot, okay? Because then that would include what the support is doing to keep the beam from falling down, right? So if this person were to stand on it and this weren't strong enough, he would fall down this way. So this support is providing some sort of clockwise torque around this pivot, if we consider this as a pivot. The person with their mass going down around this um, pivot is going to produce a anti-clockwise torque, as is the beam itself. We know that torque is force times distance. So we know all of the distances here, we could figure out what the torque is from the support. And if we know at what distance that's acting, then we could figure out the actual force that was involved. But to do that, uh, we'd need to use this idea that at equilibrium, all of the torques balance out. So can we calculate the torque from the gymnast and the torque from the beam? Well, we have the masses or the forces acting down of both, and we have the distances of both. So we're going to work out all of these um, anti-clockwise torques first, that'll tell us how big this torque is, and if we know the distance that that torque is acting from, then we could figure out how much force was involved there. Again, you might have to watch this a couple of times. So, what we have to do is calculate all of the anti-clockwise torques, which was both from the gymnast, Um, plus the torque from the beam itself, okay? The torque from the gymnast, where are we? Is that force that's acting down, we calculated that before, 
and at what distance away it is from the pivot. So if we're assuming this is the pivot, that would be at four meters because we figured out before he's 31 meter from the edge. So it'd be, f uh, oh no, he's not. Oh, that's half a meter there. So for that pivot, it would actually be three and a half meters, wouldn't it? Oh, so close, it's been tripped up. All right, so uh, talk of the gymnast is their weight forced down, 411, times their distance, which we decided was 3.5 meters. Talk from the beam uh, itself, we calculated the force that the beam applies. And that beam is applying that, this whole beam is 5 meters, so its center of mass is going to be at a 2.5 meter mark, but remembering that's half a meter there, that space is going to be 2 meters. So let's calculate those. And four ninety. So that adds up to nineteen three oh point six newton meters of torque that's anti-clockwise. Okay, that's the anti-clockwise torque. We're gonna need to use that number. And we're going to need to refer back to this, the idea that all the forces are balanced here and all the torques. So we've just calculated these two torques that are acting anti-clockwise. Um, and now we're going to say that that amount, 1930.6, is also how big this single torque is. I apologize if my camera is auto-focusing. Um, so what we need to do then is say, okay, cool. Our clockwise torque, that's from support A, is equal to 1930.6. Okay, so we'll put that aside for now. We're moving forward. That's the torque that was applied. The distance that that was applied at from this pivot is by the looks of it four meters because that's half a meter and half a meter so there'll be four meters in between so that means that we could rearrange our formula for torque torque is force times distance so force from support a would be equal to, um, sorry, I'm just looking at something else, uh, would be equal to torque divided by distance. So that's how much force this, uh, support has produced okay now let's go right back to what we said at the start was that all of the forces down so the force from the gymnast and the force from the bench itself would be equal to the two support forces we have now calculated this so let's rewrite that We've said that the force from the gymnast and the force from the bench, these are weight forces acting down, is the same as the two support forces acting up. We've just calculated support force A up. Oh, you need a bit dyslexic. 482.65. And the support from B. So now all we need to do is just do a bit of algebra and, and find what B is. So B equals all of that. Take away.
So it apparently comes out to 173.95 newtons up. In NCA level 2, we do have to consider um, how our answer comes out with our significant figures. So you just have to look back at um, the information you're given. I believe you kind of were given things down to like two significant figures. So then our answer can be rounded to two significant figures. And that is a bit of a comprehensive way. that You can actually do this slightly different when you do a bit of a shortcut. But um, this is just one way that you could do this calculation. It is quite long-winded and it's really easy to get lost. Um, so like I said, you might have to watch this one a couple of times. But if you have got any questions, feel free to ask.